Neil Marshall brings him in. He's the guy who did Dog Soldiers. He made The Descent. He made, um, you know, Doomsday. He has a real visual cinematic sense. And to me, what I like about this is you've got great performances from people like Michael Fassbender. You've got Noel Clark. I mean, actors who I really like mm -hmm. who always bring something to the screen. And yeah, I don't think it's going to be around for a long time in the cinema. I suspect it'll have a very sort of long. It's a bit life of a western, DVD. though, isn't it? Yes, it's quite, oh yes, it's, no, it's, it is. it's a western. Yes. Although it happens to be about Romans and Picts. You know, it is absolutely a western. It's very astute. It's about the thing about you're trapped behind enemy lines. You've got to get back. It's the band of people fighting their way through the. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Now we're almost out of time. A brief word about Avatar which is not in the cinema, as you're recommending it as DVD, it's on because DVD. it's two-dimensional. It's on 2D <laughs> on DVD, and I am here to tell you that it is better yeah, in well, 2D. Once you I get rid of... I like the 3D, you see, no, and you I thought didn't. the plot of Avatar was pretty rubbish, but I like well, the, the visual experience. The plot of Avatar is Pocahontas in space, <laughs> and the 3D just made everyone think, oh, this must have you know, yeah. more depth in it. The fact of the matter is, in 2D, you can see it for what it is, which is an overblown but passingly entertaining science fiction movie. Excellent. Well, on that very happy note, we'll leave it, and if you want to find out more about the latest movies on release, you can go to Mark Kermode's BBC movie blog at bbc.co.uk slash Mark Kermode. Mark still doesn't like 3D. That's it for us. Film <laughs> 24 will be back next week and he will still not like it next week. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>
Back on the campaign trail, the leaders of the three main parties redouble their efforts in the last few days before the election. After last night's final TV debate, all three say it's a fight to the finish. This election is far from over. We're now entering the most energetic and the most important stage of this campaign. The choice between change from the Conservative parties, a change you can't believe in, a change you can't trust, and a change from the Liberal Democrats, which you can trust. It's a pretty good motto to try harder, to work longer, and to dig deeper. Uh, that's what I've got to do over the next few days anyway. Mr Blair, Mr Blair, are you Mr Brown's last chance? Tony Blair is brought in to bolster Gordon Brown, who's trailing in the polls. Also on tonight's programme, a massive oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico starts to wash up on the coast of the southern United States. I'm frightened. Uh, this, is a, this is a very, very big thing, and the uh, efforts that are going to be required to do anything about it, especially if it continues on, are, are just uh, mind-boggling. And at the inquest into the death of the most senior British Army officer killed in Afghanistan, a tribute from his father. It made the nation, but more importantly, the government, realize that it was a war that we were involved in in Afghanistan, and that you don't fight wars based on hope. And later in the hour, I'll have all the sport, including Fulham start preparing for the biggest game in the club's history, as Sir Alex Ferguson claims Roy Hodgson must be named manager of the season. Good evening, welcome to the BBC News at Six. The leaders of the three main Westminster parties are all back on the campaign trail after last night's final prime ministerial debate. Several initial polls suggest the Conservative leader, David Cameron, came out on top. Nick Clegg says the Liberal Democrats offer the only alternative to the Tories. While for Labour, Gordon Brown says he needs to work longer and to dig deeper over the next few days. Here's our deputy political editor, James Landale. The debates are over, their campaigns are not. These three men now have six days to win the votes of millions of people who've yet to make up their minds. Despite the sartorial spin, polls suggest that last night's debate hasn't changed the game as Gordon Brown had hoped. Posters were up today, but some heads were down too. The question for Labour is very simple. Is there anything they can do to turn this election around? Is it enough to launch a bunch of posters in a car park here in Birmingham? Well, yes, say Labour, if they can convince people that voting for anyone but them would put the recovery and public services at risk. I think last night some of the great issues of this campaign became clear. The time for the debates has passed, as I said, but the time for decision is beginning and we will continue to fight for the future of this country until the very last second of this election campaign. A campaign Making disrupted once by an open microphone... And today, by a car crash, just yards from where they stood. A headache for the spin doctors, a gift to the headline writers, who were spoilt for choice later in the day when the Prime Minister visited a school. Am I being thrown out? Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who else has got a question for me? How did you feel after last night's debate? How did I feel after last night's debate? Very good question. Quite tired, actually. Well, tired may be, but as he visited some schools today, many Tories were confident that momentum had shifted in their favour. One question, though, have they got enough time to reassure voters who still have doubts? I think there are millions of people in this country still making up their mind about how they're going to vote, and I'm absolutely determined to do everything